coming up on Good Taste. A gigantic grill like no other. Okay, that is amazing. This popular chef takes your taste buds for one carnivorous ride they won't forget. Then we'll head uptown in H-Town for creative cocktails and seafood. Then to South Austin for south of the border sensations with a Peruvian spin from a trio who's been cooking together for 20 years. Who wins on a discussion? I mean, when you're doing a collaboration on a dish. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Our good taste fiesta fabulous Mexican food starts right now. Everyone. Welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. This is where you find the best food and wine every single week. And we're going to start today in San Antonio. We found what no doubt will be the most outrageous grill you've ever seen. And it sits smack dab in the dining room. Get ready guys. This will fire you up. Feast your eyes on this. That is incredible. A fiesta of fire roasting framed by an enormous hand-carved altar. You can just smell the cedar kind of coming off the grill. It's, it's delicious. Sizzling asadas, homemade sausages, and juicy cabritos, all dripping with goodness on a grill like no other. It's delicious. It really is. Everything's delicious. At El Machito. Known for his popular restaurants in San Antonio, Las Vegas, and even London, Chef Johnny Hernandez recently landed an invite to cook at the White House. While this chef is known for his ceviches and interior Mexican cuisine, he grew up cooking something entirely different at his father's restaurant. And it had some original Mexican uh, style as well, but it did have you know, Ameri you know, San Antonio, Texas comfort food in it. Chicken fried steak and Salisbury steak and mashed potatoes and gravy. None of that at El Machito. Here, it's all about traditional Mexican flavors with a carnivorous twist. Okay, Johnny, you have a number of different restaurant concepts. What were you thinking about when the idea, the dream of El Machito came to you? Well, to me, I felt that within Mexican food, there still wasn't anybody showcasing grilled meats, really the authentic way, cooked over wood. And there's so many different interesting ways that I've had it throughout Mexico. If I've traveled along the coast and central Mexico. Forget low and slow. Here, they grill the same way they've been grilling in Guadalajara for generations, on a massive 500 degree open flame asadado. Savor the beauty of the carnes de la paria, El Machito's mountain of tender grilled beef, pork, chicken, shrimp, and chorizo. This is the chorizo, traditional chorizo, the verde, and then this is the beef. All roasted to perfection. Oh my gosh, I want another of that. <laughs> that is unlike anything I've ever tasted in a sausage before. Along with the golden pollo asado, marinated in natto seeds, dry chilies, and spices. Or the mouth-watering baby back ribs brined overnight in sea salt. There's a sweetness in there, Johnny. Well, there's a the citrus. We have a little bit of orange, orange peel in there and a little bit of citrus that goes into our yeah. brine, so you can taste that. So Absolutely. Oh, good. that's delicious. The name El Machito is a tribute to tradition with a double meaning. Tell me about these little guys. So Machito, which is the name of our restaurant, uh, is what you have here, yeah. right, as a uh, part of the goat. But Machito, this, uh, this, this little guy was made by an artist in Puebla, Mexico. And Machito means little tough guy. A feisty luchador that embodies the colorful, fun spirit in both the food and art at El Machito. And speaking of food, how about a slice of cabrito al pastor? And it doesn't taste like chicken, in case you're wondering. <laughs> it's better. Nothing like chicken. <laughs> There's seafood here, too, with a recipe straight from Zinhuatanejo. This dish is called uh, alataya, right? To size or to order or al gusto. You're, you know, it's, 
it basically means how would you like it prepared. Yeah. So a la talla. Like? <laughs> so a la talla, we use chile guajillos. It's kind of uh -huh. one of the main ingredients to this. Olive oil, we have a little salt, we have some, crack, uh, some black pepper, some aromatics, some bay leaves, mm -hmm. thyme, some roasted onions, roasted garlic. Okay, look at mm -hmm. that. And That's a, the way to start with your garlic. <laughs> and a little bit of achote. Mm. Right? All the ingredients go into a blender to make the rich paste. Look at the mm -hmm. color. The beautiful color. Of the sauce. Mm -hmm. Wow. You can add this sauce to any kind of fish, even chicken. We're using branzino. So this is a, a saranda. A saranda. A saranda. So sarandeado. But I mean, this is a, you know, the original baskets were made out of uh, reeds of wood. Slather the sauce all over the fish with a bit of onion and lay it on a hot grill. Remember, this is high heat, so it doesn't take long. I'm gonna give it just one more minute. And this crimson beauty is ready to savor. So come enjoy a slice of cabrito, maybe a crispy churro too. Just a few of the many fun and festive pleasures waiting for you at El Machito. Pretty cool grill, right? A little later in the show, we're going to show you how to make one of El Machito's most popular marinades. Coming up, I'll tell you about one of my favorite Austin spots. Pacific Coast seafood here sizzles. That lemon is so bright. Is. But next, fire roasted gull snapper. Delicate dark chocolate decadence. You take a bite of the food and you're just like amazed. We're heading to Updown Houston. Good things come from Cisco. Welcome back. It's our goal each week to bring you a delicious mix of gorgeous food, but also to share the stories behind the people who create all that incredible food. Our next piece is a perfect example. Amazing cuisine coupled with the story of a chef who came from very meager beginnings. He now owns a restaurant in one of the most prestigious zip codes in the Bayou City. Welcome to Caracol, one of Uptown's hottest restaurants. Sleek and sophisticated, but oh so casual and comfortable. This Mexican coastal kitchen fires on all cylinders. is known for its delicious Mexican delicacies, recipes inspired by the Pacifica coastlines and Mexican street food. What makes Caracol even more special is its co-owner and chef's incredible journey. Born in the slums of Mexico City and raised on a farm in Puebla, Hugo Ortega says his grandmother inspired him to get in the kitchen and cook. He came here to Houston when he was 17 and he got in the kitchen all right as a dishwasher. I never dream up to, you know, open a restaurant here in Houston, but that's why love is all about it, right? Well, and I, the, the, your story, you're a very humble man. You're incredibly, incredibly talented and respected, but you came to Houston as a dishwasher. You were an immigrant and started working in a kitchen. Yes, I started from, um, you know, like those guys over there washing dishes, it's pretty loud. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's, a, it's been a great. The industry has been great to me. And the city, everything is about the city and, and, and the people, they are this wonderful city and, you know, this wonderful country too. And this chef is known for his wonderful food, like the sweet, succulent Langosta Puerto Nuevo and the rich, buttery scallops, cayo de hacha, that sit on a bed of creamy poblano sauce with sauteed mushrooms and cauliflower. My grandma and, and it was very, um, very influential in my, life, in my childhood. Um, we, uh, we went to the farm and I, I, I stayed there for uh, five years and there was not electricity. You know, it was just um, a candlelight at night and um, um, uh, to go and get water, I have to put these uh, gourds in a donkey and go to the well. And I learned how to uh, milk the goats and the cows and how to make cheese and chocolate. Who, know, who knew that, you know, at some point in my life would be the strongest point. And uh, now here and there when I get lost, I just remember those things and that, you know, keep me up going. <laughs> 
And the delicious food here at Caracol keeps lots of other folks going too. It's definitely a family affair. Hugo's wife, Tracy, is his business partner. Brother Ruben is the executive pastry chef. Ruben's chocolate creations are the stuff dreams are made of, like this delicate yet decadently delicious dark chocolate mousse. The chocolate, like everything at Caracol, is made in-house from scratch right there in the kitchen. The local fish is fresh and arrives daily. Put the butter. The oysters laced with chipotle, Mexican cheese and garlic, then fire roasted in Caracol's wood-burning oven are one of the restaurant's signature dishes. Then there's the popular bar. It's stunning. And so are many of the mixologists' creative drinks. Like the hard sun, look closely. It has spicy chilies embedded in the ice cube. Or the Monday morning hangover drink, made with egg yolk, orange juice, and cherry vanilla extract. Does it work? I don't know, I haven't tried it. I used to, let's find out, I'm going to hang over. Cheers. 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 Salud. <laughs> Okay. You know what's actually it's not bad. Good. <laughs> From the food to the drinks to the vibe, there are lots of reasons to come to Caracol. We did not know exactly what is going to happen, but we knew that um, if we, you know, we have the opportunity to do uh, this type of cuisine. They perhaps will be successful. Modest words from a modest man whose success story is what the American dream is made of. Who knows what talent is waiting to emerge from the kitchens here. Okay, time now to get the recipe for that delicious marinade that Chef Johnny Hernandez at El Machito used in the fish dish. I'm with my expert, Chef Adrian at H-E-B Cooking Connection, our go-to spot for making a complicated recipe easy for us at home. That's right, and I love the freshness that he puts into this marinade. And we're going to whip it up simple and easy for you guys at home using some of our H-E-B products. Now, in this dish, we're doing it with chicken tacos, right? Right, so we've marinated some of the H-E-B all-natural chicken, and we're putting a little twist on the tortilla for these. We've got these amazing jicama tortillas, low carb, low sugar, low yeah. calorie, gluten-free, all the stuff that we're looking for in our food these days. And uh, we're dressing up the marinade with one of our Adams Reserve Chipotle Five Spice, sort of Christmas at the beach, if you will. So right. keeping it fresh and fun. Let's do it. So we'll start with our fresh squeezed lime and orange juice. These are squeezed on the daily in the produce. Doesn't get any fresher than that. You don't have to do it at home. We don't have to do it at home anymore. <laughs> so a couple of cups of each, a little lime to cut through that. This is what's going to break down the chicken also. In goes the onion, fresh cilantro, and a couple of cloves of garlic for that nice little savory flavor. And we're going to flavor it up with that chipotle five spice from Adams. A lot going on here, some savory, some sweet, and a little smokiness with the smoked paprika. It's also gonna give it that really pretty color. It's a beautiful color. Yeah, and we'll blend away. And over the HEB all natural chicken, this is the best of the best. No antibiotics, no hormones. You guys can let that sit for overnight, couple of days, pop it on the grill with a little olive oil and serve it up taco style. Love the presentation with the jicama <laughs> Thank tacos you so and much. the pineapple. Yeah, and y'all can use this marinade universally, vegetables, fish, chicken, pork, and beef. It's just fresh and good on everything. Chef, thank you. Thank you so much. Got the recipe at GoodTaste.tv. Ready to party? Festive wines that pair with chocolate and steak in my wine finds. But next, the trio that's rocking Mexican food in South Austin. The cocktails are sublime. Mm. <laughs> so many of you told me about this place that I had to check it out. Don't go away. Margaritas are served when we come right back. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by H-E-B. There's nothing like a little good food. I think the food is fantastic. Good drinks. Cheers. The cocktails are sublime. Mm and good times to bring friends together. Throw in delicious fresh seafood, the laid back atmosphere of a beachside spot without the ocean, and you're at Alkamar in Austin. When I come here, it's just, it's like family and I just come and 
hang out. I know I'm going to be welcome. Fun flavors of Mexico combined with the vibrant spices of Peru and places beyond. A feast for the eyes and a party for your taste buds. Tempt yours with the butternut squash poblano relleno. The sweetness of the squash and the smoky flavors of the poblano are a delicious combination. Or there's a soft shell crab torta with creamy avocado. A seafood sandwich never tasted so good. And check out this wood grilled snapper sitting on top of a rich mole verde sauce. And make sure to save room for these crispy sweet banuelos. I really couldn't say there's a favorite item because then I would just feel like I was not loving all of the beautiful things that this place has to offer. <laughs> the creativity for these tantalizing tastes starts here with this trio who shares a 20-year friendship. Uh, I think the reason that, 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 that we've, we've stayed together working is that we've been friends for such a long time. I mean, that's oh, definitely that's a part of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Skateboarding chef Jeff Martinez and dog lover Chef Alma Alcocer are Alcomar's namesakes. Created this name that's Alcomar, those are the first letters of my last name and the first three letters of his name. Along with their friend and co-owner, Carlos Rivera. It's mostly these guys, I'll be honest. I'm not a chef. Uh, I love to eat. You will too when you see the incredible dishes the chefs come up with in Alcomar's kitchen. Like Alma's wood-grilled calamari salad. A simple dish that bursts with flavor, like bright tomatoes, jalapenos, and roasted calamatas. A lemon aioli sets the whole thing off. That lemon. Yeah. That so lemon aioli bright. is just fantastic. Mm. From the Mexican coast to the Peruvian sea, all in the same kitchen. A bright, zesty ceviche inspired from Jeff's travels, marinated with Peruvian chilies, fresh orange juice, and ginger. It's just pretty much just garnishing this dish. And I've got some fresh oregano leaves here to give it a little bit of a earthy flavor. I have some pickled onions, which is very common in a Peruvian ceviche. Peruvian sweet potatoes add a creamy richness. Toasted corn kernels top it off with a fun, salty crunch. Perfection on a plate. All of it comes from the heart. I think the reason that, 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 that we've, we've stayed together working is that we've been friends for such a long time. I mean, that's oh, definitely that's a part absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Not to mention their countless years cooking and traveling together. You know, we all know each other and love each other. You've all got each other's back. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The way a great friendship should be. Exactly. <laughs> a great team. <laughs> a great team. With the team so tight, are there ever too many chefs in the kitchen? So when it comes with three, um, three, you know, chefs, so to speak, and I know you don't call yourself a chef, but sometimes experience counts. You get the title when you've been working in the food business so long. Right. Who wins on a discussion? I mean, when you're doing a collaboration on a dish. Me. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> He's a wise guy. Yes, she's, yes, she was. No, I, it mostly because you know I, I'm always the one asking the questions. Obviously, it pays off because their fans love the food. Time for my wine find. Some perfect wines to celebrate the season. And up first, the ultimate party wine. This one really is a lot of fun. This is the Stella Rosa red reserve when you smell this wine when you open the bottle raspberries literally leap right up at you this is a fun wine this is a fruit forward wine it is slightly sweet so if you love sweeter wines this is for you it's also good with chocolate this is definitely a crowd pleaser at just under 14 dollars a bottle stella rosa red reserve Okay, my Chardonnay fans, I wouldn't leave you out. I know there's lots of you out there. This is the Martin Ray Chardonnay. It comes from the Russian River Valley. The wine has flavors of golden apples, nectarines, and pears. It does spend a little time in oak, which adds a nice roundness to the wine. You'll taste just a bit of vanilla on the finish. Chard fans, you're going to like this one. It's less than $15 a bottle. Okay, big red fans. I'm gonna step you up a notch. I fell in love with this wine. This one is Hoops Vineyard Cabernet. 
This is a serious wine. It is perfect for a special holiday meal or a special holiday gift. With the Hoops Oakville Cab, think big, luscious fruit flavors like cassis, blackberries, and cherries. You'll also get some spices and even hints of leather. This is a lovely wine with layers of flavor that will keep you interested till the very last sip. It pairs beautifully with roasted meats, pork loins, steaks too. The Hoops Oakville Cabernet is just under $50, a beautiful holiday wine. And as always, I found all my wines at HEB. When we come back, details on how you could win a relaxing weekend at the Houstonian. How about a weekend away? Complete with spa treatments. Here's how you could win. Head to goodtaste.tv right now and sign up for a chance to win a luxurious weekend at the Houstonian. Complete with spa treatments for you and a guest at the beautiful, award-winning Trellis Spa. Let's get social, guys. Like us on Facebook at Good Taste with Tangie or follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Tangie Patton. And don't forget, if you missed any of today's show, you can always get it online at goodtaste.tv. Thanks so much for joining us. And as always, cheers to good taste.